Hey, welcome to the show. Today we're going to talk about fair market value and address the question of whether or not the price that you see on an exchange for a digital asset in this case, is that the fair market value of the asset? The answer is no. And we're going to break that down in this video today. Hey, welcome to the show. Molly Elmore here. Today, we're going to talk about a topic that's come up quite a bit recently within the XRP world, but certainly has applications well beyond that. So this past weekend, I participated in a very extensive Twitter, somewhat heated Twitter discussion around this XRP buyback proposal. And one idea or concept that I think is causing a lot of confusion is whether or not the price of XRP on an exchange, which let's call that, you know, 35 cents, whether that's the, the actual fair market value of this asset. Because we've been pretty clear that the goal of this confidential committee within this XRP buyback proposal project is one of the goals is to establish the fair market value. And the response that I've gotten when I've addressed this myself is, well, why do you have to do that? You could just the fair market value is what is uh, the prices on the exchange. Like we have a free market. Anybody can go and buy and sell on this free market. Why are you wasting your time with this exercise when we already know the value? And so I want to break down that there's a difference between the market value, which is what you see on an exchange, and the fair market value. They're actually quite different. They're calculated differently and they're used differently and understanding this difference i think will help you dramatically understand why this xrp buyback committee is doing this and how it relates to ethgate and the sec lawsuit against ripple first thing i want to do is just quickly show you this uh infographic that i found i often create my own but in this case it seemed unnecessary because this one is nice and clear and it compares the fair value, the fair market value with the actual market value. And they define it as the fair value can be referred to as the actual worth of an asset that can be derived fundamentally by using mathematical methods such as discounted cash flow, which cannot be determined by any of the other market forces. Market value is solely determined by the market forces or the factors of the supply and demand and it is the value that is not fundamentally determined of an asset. So the difference really here, we're going to break down with a couple of examples, is that the fair market value is somewhat of a academic exercise where you have a series of formulas that are used to calculate the value of something based on a whole bunch of assumptions and conditions and criteria. The market value is what you observe in the actual market where people are buying and selling something in an open marketplace. And it's often volatile, subject to hype and emotions and trends and all sorts of, of things. And in a perfect world, you might see that the fair market value and the market value are the same. That would sort of mean that there's no market manipulation, there's no duress, there's no un, you know, conditions by which people are not freely able to buy and sell without any restrictions. So I'm going to give you an example. So let's say you have this celebrity who builds this $10 million house in LA. Beautiful house. It, you know, primo land, great construction. The fair market value is established to be $10 million based on a long list of criteria. And then let's say this celebrity has like a crazy party at their house one day and something really bad happens, like really bad. I can't even think of what it would be, but just thinks like something so bad, terrible. And the media knows about it. The tabloids are there. And, and all of a sudden, every person in the world knows that this is the house where that thing happened. And they recognize it. And now this celebrity can't sell the house. But they have to because something happened, you know, they're all they're maybe this terrible thing, they're now in legal trouble, and they need like money for lawyer bills, whatever. So they are forced to sell this house at like, an incredibly low price, like $500,000. And the, the reason why is that all of these 
external, emotional, hypey type influences have affected the price. This terrible thing didn't actually inflict any physical damage whatsoever on this house. The house is still beautiful. The land is still the same. The neighbors are still the same. The comps are still the same. However, due to market forces, the perceived value is now gone down. So the market value, what you could actually sell it for has gone way, way down. So now there's a big gap between the fair market value, what it should be on paper, and the market value of what you can actually get. Let's talk about gold for a second. So it's a pretty well-known fact that gold is manipulated. Like I've written threads on it and I've made videos on it. I'll put them in the description. This is not a theory that I came up with. Talk to any gold bug and they will explain to you that this market has been manipulated for quite a while. Just to give you the highlights of it, central banks have gold. They issue these paper certificates that correspond to the gold. They can issue more certificates and they have gold because nobody's keeping track. And then another bank or investment fund type thing, somebody that knows how to short can take these paper certificates, take a lot of them. They can go to an exchange and short gold. It's actually using a technique called naked shorts, which means they don't actually possess the gold. They just possess the paper, which isn't worth anything. It's actually illegal to do this, but they are able to short the price. It then triggers a whole bunch of like stop loss things, market or, you know, uh, orders that are programmed into an exchange. So all of a sudden now the price goes down. It's a me method for manipulating a market. And so it's been pretty clear that this is being done to protect the value of the dollar, whatever. But the idea is that the market value of gold, what it is exchanging for on a daily basis, is not the same as the fair market value. What would gold be worth if nobody was shorting it? If nobody could control this market because maybe there were multiple markets around the globe, which would create an arbitrage opportunity if one was being artificially manipulated without another one. So in this case, it's widely believed that there's a big difference between the fair market value, what is the sort of calculated value if you were to look at a bunch of formulas and what gold is used for and worth and store value and all that stuff versus what it's actually trading for on an open market. So back to market manipulation. Sorry, I'm not going back. First time, market manipulation. It would be nice if we had this free market. I love the idea of a free market. I think it's super cool. And when I sort of have sold things locally in my community, I've had this like soap making business for a while. And I, when I first started it, I sold products at our local farmer's market. It was super fun, great experience. I'm not doing it again, but it was, it was neat. And there was another soap maker there and we competed against each other. And we, you know, we had to differentiate our products and, um, it was actually a free market because nobody would cared enough about this tiny little thing to manipulate it. But let's just say hypothetically that the managers of the farmer's market, you know, they, let's say they liked her better than they liked me. They could have given her like primo placement at the market or hyped her up every week in the emails that go out. And they could have, they could have also disliked me enough that they said that I had to pay like a tariff, like a tax on everything I sold. And I had to give them 20%. Those kinds of things happen in the real world and they are a manipulation of the market. And if the, they don't really happen that much in local farmers markets, I don't think, but when you get into the global arena, you have influences like marketing and news media. And when, you know, the news media at scale hypes up a particular stock and maybe disparages another stock, that really has an impact on the market value of stocks. Like if people are hearing all these sort of talking heads on, you know, MSNBC hyping something up or, you know, Fox business, they're going to think that, wow, that must be a great stock. And it drives up the price. And conversely, if they hear all these terrible things like, oh, this stock is doing terrible, I would definitely sell it, it drives it down. Does that change the actual calculated like profitability and earnings calculations for that company? Probably not. Now, you could make the argument that media coverage is marketing, which could drive sales. But let's just say this applied to like a co company that has government contracts, like a Raytheon kind of thing. Consumers aren't buying things from Raytheon. So the fluctuation of the stock based on media hype is not likely to actually affect earnings. So 
there isn't a relationship between this fair market value, which is a calculated analyst exercise versus this market value, which is observed in the real market with buying and selling activity. Very irrational, very emotional, driven by trends. People see something going in a certain direction, they all hop on. And conversely, they see it going down, they all hop off. There's a lot of volatility in market value. It goes up and down. If there wasn't, there wouldn't be any traders because <laughs> traders trade on volatility. Like they trade on things going up and going down. Where fair market value, it's a calculated number and it's not going to go up and down on a daily basis. It's based on a bunch of inputs that don't really change. So gold likely has a fair market value that is calculated and we have an observed market value that changes on a daily basis based on trading, this shorting business that some of these institutions do and kind of other things from the media about maybe whether or not the dollar's on its way out, so we should all move our money into gold. Those are all going to affect the market value, which is not the same as that calculated fair market value. All right, let's go back to my $10 million celebrity house example. Let's say that instead of this celebrity owning this house, I actually own this house. I own this $10 million house and I rent it out to this celebrity. And the celebrity has this big party. Same scenario we talked about before and some horrible, terrible thing happens in this. My house is now on every tabloid across the world is like the house where this terrible thing happened and I can't sell the house. And let's say, you know, I'm freaking out about this and I, you know, I need to. So I have to sell it at a dramatic loss. That sucks, right? You could make the argument that this wasn't my fault. I didn't have this party. This had nothing to do with me. And this asset that I owned, which was like maybe a huge part of my portfolio, has now massively diminished in value. I'm not an attorney, nor do I pretend to be one <laughs> on TV, but I would believe that I should be entitled to some kind of damages and be able to sue this celebrity for wrecking the value of my asset. And that, you know, even though the asset wasn't physically damaged, there was no structural damage to the house, like the yard is still beautiful, whatever. I can't sell it because of this perception in the market that is now labeled this house as like that bad house where that terrible thing happened. So we now have a situation where I have to sell it at a very low value and relative to what I know it's worth because of all the calculations that I've done, there's a big gap between the fair market value of my house and the market value. And maybe I could sue this celebrity for that loss of value and the fact that I now had to sell my asset at a dramatically lower value than what it should have been worth, right? So that brings us to the Ripple XRP situation. So let's say you owned XRP and you had this vision that this asset was going to be used in a whole bunch of cross-border payments and scale to eventually move all the money. And then one day this lawsuit gets filed and the value of your asset drops dramatically. And the businesses who you had planned on adopting XRP as an asset for payments, they're now freaking out. It's kind of like the house with this, where this terrible thing happened. They're like, listen, we do payments. Like we got to process, you know, a thousand transactions an hour. I can't file a securities transaction, paperwork, whatever on all of those. Like I don't have the means to do that. And it would just be not, it would be, it's a deal breaker. So all these businesses that would use XRP because of its incredible functionality are not out of fear that they're going to have this nightmare of paperwork or even worse, be in violation of the law that they're like trading securities without the right kind of license. So they don't do anything. They either don't start the business or they wait, or they use something else that's not as good. But consequently, me as this XRP shareholder, all of this adoption that was going to happen in my forecasting isn't. So we're kind of back to this situation like we had with the house. So I had this asset based on my calculations, it was going to be worth a certain amount. Now, how I arrived at calculations, we'll talk about that in a second. But let's say I had a system, of, I'm a financial analyst, and I go and I calculate what I think this future value is of this asset. But then along comes this 
this case. And now this token is kind of like this celebrity house where like these terrible things happen. And it's on every tabloid, kind of labeled with this stigma. And the people that I had thought were going to use it in their businesses aren't. So the value is suppressed. It's kind of a little bit like that house, right? Well, where there's an entity, one case it was the celebrity, in this other case it's the SEC, who took action. Those actions had consequences, and the consequence directly in fact impacted the value of my asset. In one case, my house was worth very little as a result of this perceived drama. The other one is a diminished value based on a perceived, almost like liability, like a risk. If, if businesses were to use their people were to own this and use it in their business, there's a risk that you could get in trouble for it or have this nightmare paperwork scenario. So both cases, my asset is damaged in terms of its market value. It's not gone up like it's supposed to. I thought my $10 million house was actually going to be worth $12 million two years later because the person down the street I heard just sold theirs and they got you know some great money for it. So I was under the impression that my asset was going to be appreciating. But instead, due to this unforeseen external influence that created this emotional drama, the market value of my house went down. Same thing happened with XRP. The market value has been massively suppressed because of all of this messiness around this case. Now, you could also argue that there's not a lot of merit to that case. Like the SEC has not proven that this asset is in fact a security and they've dragged this case on for years. You would think if you had this like rock star case and you were this government agency that wanted to prove like what a badass you were and have this amazing track record for for like punishing people that you would, you know, you'd get that show on the road and want to have that win in your belt to sort of brag to people about. But instead, they've dragged it out at every possible opportunity. At least that's what it looks like to me. So it doesn't really make sense. So there's this possibility that that case was filed for other purposes, maybe to slow ripple down, uh, which again, like, government agency isn't really supposed to do that kind of thing. They're supposed to act with integrity and uphold innovation and protect the interests of investors. They're not supposed to be like a tool or a pawn for a turf war between banks. Like that's not really how it's supposed to work in my estimation. So let's say that this happened and the market value was diminished, which I think is pretty clear. And let's say that I decided like I wanted to sue the celebrity for damages. Let's say in this case, I felt like I'm owed damages. Well, if I were to go to court and present my case, I would have to prove like mathematically, this is what the value is today. And this is what I believe it should be based on my calculations of fair market value. What would this asset be worth had this lawsuit never happened? Had these businesses been allowed to adopt it? Had this XRP ledger been free to do its thing on its own organic schedule? That's what the fair market value would be. And what you do is a simple math calculation. You say, this is what it was supposed to be. This is what it is. Let's do this some subtraction. The difference is my damages. And someone who is responsible for this owes me. Now, I don't know if this is going to happen, but this is the idea or the concept between the between fair market value versus market value. So what is trading on exchanges? I mean, it's real. There's buyers and sellers doing that, but it's very much manipulated. People who probably would be participating in that market are not out of fear. There's incredible influence of media making people scared to use XRP, to even hold XRP. There's this sort of worry, like what happens if we wake up tomorrow and this asset is a security? Like, am I going to get in trouble for even having it if I'm not an accredited investor? I don't think those that will happen, but that's a legitimate concern people have, which is slowing down the adoption of this asset as a payments rail globally. Even though this is a U.S. issue, the U.S. is a very large market. Right now, we still have dollar dominance to sort of say that you're not going to participate in the U.S. market at this stage is like chopping off your leg. Like you're it's not going to gain the adoption that it could. And it still brings back to this point of like, this asset could have been at a certain stage. It's not. What is the difference? 
So market value is not the same as fair market value. To calculate fair market value in some like industries, whatever, is fairly straightforward. For stocks, they have formulas. For real estate, they have formulas. This is a little different because this is a digital asset that is used for payments. It can process many, many payments very, very quickly, very inexpensively. It can move a lot of value, but it can also be a store of value. And if you watch my video the other day, which I'll link in the description, there's sort of going to be this competing market force that as the adoption grows, you're going to have more and more people want to use it for utility and more and more people want to use it to store value. And it kind of creates this spiral effect up called the virtuous cycle. And that will also affect the price. So the calculation of fair market value for this asset is, is complicated. And that's why there's like a whole bunch of people working on it, a bunch of really smart math people. And this is why it's important, though. It's not just something to do for fun or this idea that we're expecting that anyone to buy it back. But if I wanted to make the case to you that my asset was damaged by the actions of a party that may not have been acting honorably or even legally, I have to be able to have two numbers to compare. I need to show you the price of it today. And I need to know you to show you the price about what it could have been had nothing happened, which is the fair market value. So that is the difference between these two numbers and why it's important to sort of be clear that the, va the, the value that we're talking about in terms of the calculations that we're doing are completely irrelevant and independent of what is available on the exchanges. So, all right, I just want to clear that up for everybody. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any comments about this or questions, feel free to check out, uh, tell me below and I will respond to you. See ya.